I live off grid in the high desert of Arizona. Today I'm going to show you this cheap aquaponic system that I set up right here in my geothermal greenhouse. The bottom of the aquaponic system is about a 400 gallon vinyl aquarium. On the top, I used an old trailer bed and I bought a used vinyl liner from a billboard, just made sure that it didn't have any holes in it, and lined the trailer to make a grow bed. In order to regulate temperature, I put the aquaponic system in my geothermal greenhouse. And in order to regulate the temperature, I have to have these fans that pump through 200 linear feet of hose, it's four inch tubing, corrugated, that's about four feet underground. I cut a hole through the floor of the trailer to install a bell siphon that I built using a bulkhead. I connected a 12 volt bilge pump to move water through the filter and a 12 volt air pump to put oxygen in for the fish. The geothermal has been working pretty good, but I added an additional fan just to make sure that I'm really regulating the temperature. The hoses connected to the system are only temporary. I'm just using them to fill the system up from my rainwater harvesting system. I used a vinyl patch kit to reinforce the vinyl liner where the bulkhead meets the trailer. And I used some scrap material to make a 90 degree elbow so that it will restrict the water flow, which enables the bell siphon. The filter is just a five gallon bucket with two holes and a sunshade cloth stuffed inside. There's enough water in the system now for the bell siphon to complete a cycle. You can see the bell siphon set up there with some holes at the bottom. There's a bulkhead through the bottom of the trailer. There's a vinyl liner to line it, which makes the grow bed. The holes at the bottom of the bell siphon allow water to go in and fill it up. And there's a pipe in the inside with a larger cap at the top, like a funnel. The water falls into that. If I don't have the restrictor on, and it just fell straight through, the siphon won't start. So by adding the restrictor, it plugs the water and slows it enough that the pipe gets plugged and it creates the siphon. And then this flows out faster than the pump pumps water back up and in through my filter. This is just a bucket with a hole here and a hole here. I cut a sunshade cloth and stuffed it in here until it's brim full. And so the water goes through that filters and eventually it should probably pick up some algae and when there's fish in there it should pick up some of the poo and whatnot. I could potentially just use the lava rock that's going to be in the bed but this is an additional filter. Both of these hoses come from tanks on the property. This one's actually been filling the system. This one is connected to a frozen tank that I was hoping would thaw out and help fill the system. So if I was to remove those right now the system would stay about exactly where it's at and just sit there and cycle except for some of the water that would uh, evaporate and I would just have to add more water. So that'll be the first test is to make sure that the solar system in the geothermal can run that 24-7. It's also running two fans now. I had one little PC fan connected to the geothermal. Now I have another one. So one's sucking air in and one's pumping air out. And that continues to regulate the temperature. The water from the aquaponics will help regulate the temperature. Keeping the water flowing consistently will prevent freezing of the water. Once I fill this with lava rock, it'll be about six inches deep. It'll be a six inch grow bed. And that'll mean that I'll be displacing a bunch of this water and it'll end up in this tank. So that's why I'm only gonna fill this about halfway for now. I'll fill up the lava rock in here and see exactly where the level gets. And because there's gonna be a lot less water in here, if anything goes wrong, it'll just fill the bottom tank completely. I added a hose to this side so I can open that valve and I can roll this hose anywhere I want to water. And the entire garden slopes down this way. So I could, I could go up there and really water it good and the water will kind of come down this way. And I can do the same thing on that side. Before I had thought about doing aquaponics, the plan was to make this 32 feet long so I could have two 30 inch deep, 30 foot long rows, which are standard. So I'd just have two large rows in here. But I thought, man, that'd be a great idea to do aquaponics in the back and it takes up some space. So to make up for that, I'm going to build at least one trellis that goes up above the system here. 
and I'll run hydroponics across it. So I can just pump water up from the aquaponic system into the hydroponic system and the water will go across and I might have strawberries or whatnot coming off of the trellis. I could completely black out and insulate that back wall and put up sunshade cloth here. And I could also completely close in the bottom there. If I have any algae problems, I can just hang cloth over there and it, it should really prevent any problems like that from occurring. So the only electronics required, because I'm regulating the temperature with geothermal, I don't need to heat or cool it, but I have a 12 volt pump, that's a bilge pump, and then I have a 12 volt air pump. And they're just run up to the side of the geothermal and all the way over to the solar system here. And now, the solar system was only 13.2 this morning and now it's 14.4. Which means even with the geothermal vents running, as long as the sun's out, I'll never have a problem. It, it fully charges and, and doesn't drain the system at all with the sun out. So we'll check back in the morning and see if the system is continually running. And if I can do that when there's clouds out for a couple days, two or three days, then we should be absolutely golden to run the aquaponic system 24-7. 365, hopefully. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a comment if you have a question. Subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Check out this playlist for more videos about my aquaponics system. And I'll catch you on the next one.